So on our server, I just wanted to review some of the things here that we can see on our server. The first thing is we have the instance details. The summary is like the ID, the public IP address, its state, and all that good stuff. The instance type. We have security, which goes over if there's an IAM role associated with this. There is not. So this is if there's some permissions associated with the server that lets me talk to the AWS API without having to have a key and a secret key uh, on the server explicitly. The owner ID is my account ID. We have those two security groups associated with the server, which allows the following inbound rules, port 22 for SSH, and then our web ports. And they are all are allowed from any uh, external source. So this network traffic can come from anywhere. Networking, um, it's just more of the networking stuff, right? The VPC the server is in, the subnet the server was launched into, the public IP address and private one once again. So this server has this private IP address, which is an IP address in the range that was created in this subnet, which itself is a subset of IP addresses that are available in the VPC here. This subnet puts the server into the US East 2C availability zone, which is one of the three physical locations of the Ohio region. There's storage, so this server has one disk mounted at dev SDA1. It's an EBS type disk, which is basically just the regular volumes used for AWS. It has eight gigabytes, like we saw. It's a volume, it's another resource. You actually pay extra per gigabyte per month. So there is a charge for your EBS disk drive. There's status checks, which are just some internal checks based on the hardware that AWS provides. And there's monitoring. Now, I did not enable detailed monitoring. If I selected that monitoring checkbox when I was creating the EC2 server, then the server would send data to the monitoring to CloudWatch every one minute. But right now, it's just doing every five minutes. So we can see my CPU usage is very low. Status checks, which are um, these status checks here, they are at a state of zero, which means they have not failed. A one would be a failed message. And then there's all sorts of stuff, network in, disk reads, disk out, CPU credit usage, CPU credit balance, all that good stuff. Let's actually hop over to CloudWatch. CloudWatch is where all those metrics go. So I can check out metrics, all metrics for EC2 servers, per instance metrics. I want to grab ones related to the onboarding server, so onboarding AWS instance. The onboarding instance is this one, so I'll copy that and just do this. So we get this specific instance here for metrics. Which ones do you care about? So the credit balance and credit usage are you going to care about. So CPU credit balance is one you want to pay attention to. You can see the instance basically starts with zero credits for a T3 type instance. T2s start with some uh, baseline of credits. C T3s don't because they have that unlimited mode. So they start about zero and they go up, um, assuming you don't use a lot of CPU usage. If you go over a certain baseline, then you start using credits. So you can see my credit balance is going up over time here. My usage is going down, conversely, which makes sense as the credit balance goes up. CPU utilization, of course, you can check also, and CPU utilization will correlate with your credit balance and credit usage, right? So higher CPU usage, higher credit usage, the lower your credit balance. We can see here our CPU usage is down, so our credit balance is going up. Network in and out is kind of interesting. EBS IO balance doesn't matter too much because we have GP3 type instances. So there's no burst balance associated with those for your uh, IOPS. Now you can also check volumes. So for EBS, we have a bunch of metrics here. The one I want to point you at is a queue length. So um, it's essentially zero here. There's almost no data here. Um, but what you want to see is that this number is close to zero, very low. Queue length is the number of IO operations, the number of input output operations that are pending for an EBS volume for a disk drive. So if you have pending operations, that's bad. So uh, typically this should be kind of below one or two. It really depends on your usage. If really high usage on like a busy database is, is you know, like two or three, but that varies based on your use case. But the queue length is one I want to point you at for EBS disk drives. If it's high, that means there's a lot of pending IO operations on that disk drive, which means that's probably bottlenecking your application somewhere. So in addition to things like CPU credit usage on your server for the T2 or T3 or T4G instance types, you also, for your EBS drives, want to pay attention to the volume queue length to make sure that that is not getting high. 